Hello, Mayday family. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, my name is Mayday and I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. So today I am going to do a reaction video on Tati Westbrook's coming back to YouTube. Uh, I did do a video uh, when she was going through this whole scandal thing. Uh, I believe that was like maybe a little bit over a year ago, maybe two years ago now. So she's back. <laughs> uh, I, I thought maybe she wouldn't come back. And I have to say, I'm not a big fan of hers. I've never been. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, either way. <laughs> but let's see what she has to say now that she's back and uh, see how that applies as far as from a mental health perspective video i have missed you so much i i cannot wait to get back to the makeup to get back to reviews to doing my thing i've thought about this for so long and i'm really excited that i'm even just sitting down and filming however as much as i wanted to dive right back into like a 10 under 10 and just review beauty products which honestly i did flirt with that idea i was like we're going to talk about nothing we're just going to go because it's inescapable. It's really pouring down today. Uh, if you hear that, that was a terrible time in my life. Obviously, I was so super stressed out, but I'm going to stop it there. I don't want to talk about it. I don't think you guys want to hear about it, that whole event. That's not even the volcano that erupted in my life. So that past event that seems to want to follow me everywhere I go, I don't want to talk about, I will let you guys know just because there's so much speculation and so many rumors of who's friends with who and who's talking to who and what's going on. So for, by her saying, oh, I just don't want to talk about that. It just follows me everywhere I go. It makes me wonder uh, about her level of maturity, right? This is a woman whom is fairly old. As a matter of fact, let's look up how old this this lady is, right? Let's see. Because this has always been one of the things that I just always continues to disappoint me about Tati Westbrook. For her age, she is not just not where she could be, right? And that has always frustrated me about about this lady is for her age and for all the opportunities that she's been blessed with as far as YouTube goes, because of her decisions and because just of her sheer lack of wisdom, she is just not where she should be. And it drives me nuts. And she continues to get on YouTube talking to the younger people when she is, <laughs> she, those days are gone for her, right? So let me see here do a quick, you know, Google has all the answers. Okay, so according to Google, she is 39 years old, soon to be 40 in February. I mean, this is an old lady. This lady is old, man. So, and why I'm saying, why I'm saying it like that is because out in the real world, 39 isn't bad. It's not like super old or anything like that. It's a, it's a great age out in the real world. For what she does and for all the scandals she's been involved in, it makes me question her maturity and it makes her age pop out even more. I'm like, you are too old to be getting involved in all of these scandals and all of this, these things. I mean, it's like, there's such easy decisions to make should be for someone of that age. How did the, how did you let this happen? So that's one of the biggest things that's always driven me crazy about this person. Um, there are other things, but let's see what else she has to say. On what happened behind the scenes. I will quickly share with you guys that I, when I pulled back, I stopped communication with everyone in the beauty community. Harassment. I'm talking death threats that were explicit in detail. People saying they were going to hunt me down, they knew where I was. 
I was getting emails, some of the most disturbing of me being monitored in the privacy of my own home through technology, to my smart TV, being blackmailed if I didn't pay up, that they were going to put that all over the internet. I was getting accounts made with my name and horrific graphic adult acts um, in the title, like the screen name from the most popular uh, adult site online. There were things that were happening that were so appalling. And when you feel violated of your privacy, like you're being spied on and you're blackmailed and that people are harassing you in this really graphic nature, and you're getting a barrage of detailed death threats, let me tell you, you lose sleep. And it just felt like my world was coming to a halt. So that's what was going on in spring and summer of last year. But I really- Okay, so I really don't know what the deal is with these um, YouTube influencers. They all seem to have uh, the same or very similar personality characteristics they they just I don't really understand so again she's looking down reading something I'm wondering what it is that she's reading probably her notes so that already tells me automatically that this video is fully scripted for the most part and so very very watered down as far as the amount of um, honesty and sincerity that we're going to get from the video it's going to be fairly limited right so that's fine. Um, but another thing that she's doing here is, of course, trying to get us to empathize with her, trying to get her, get us to feel sorry for her, for the things that um, maybe she's been going through and have been happening to her, right? Um, what I would like to see more of is just ownership and taking responsibility. If you're going to jump back on YouTube and talk about it again. Uh, and just be honest about it. But yeah, you know, that seems to be too much to ask from these YouTubers. So, uh, you know, she's just kind of going in as far as, you know, things that have happened and what she feels like we should feel bad for her about or in regards to. Uh, I will say that my empathy is fairly limited when it comes to her in particular because of the decisions that she's made. A lot of the, the, the position that she's in and she was in, uh, a lot of it was self-inflicted and it wasn't just like once, oh, I learned my lesson. I mean, she kept going like bad decision after bad decision, even after consequence after consequence. And so there's a limit to, you know, what can be done if you keep making the wrong choices. One thing about, about Tat, Tati is that I feel like she got really lucky with the YouTube thing, but unfortunately for her, you can't get lucky when it comes to wisdom and you can't get lucky when it comes to smarts, being able to use your brain, be strategic, uh, being smart, right? So we, we all know she didn't go to school or anything like that. And I feel like for her, it really shows. And she's one of those individuals that could probably really benefited from going to school and getting that additional education um, just to broaden her knowledge because now she's almost 40 and you can tell that she's severely lacking. She lucked out on this YouTube thing and that's all she's got. After how many years of doing YouTube, it's very disappointing. But let's see, let's see what else she's got to say here, um, in in her video. Come back. So my initial hope was to come back sooner. And in this time, I want to state I have never left Halo. I have always stayed active as the CEO. Fast forward to me being healed enough to think I'm going to post. Okay, so th the Halo thing, I mean, that product was trash. Every product that she put out was junk, trash. And I never bought any of her products because I was always so disappointed by her decision making. So I was one of those people that I watched a few videos of her a few years back and I said, oh, okay, cool, right? 
And then I would check in every now and then, and it would be trash after trash after trash. <laughs> and I'm like, we don't have a bright one here. It's not the brightest. She's not the brightest crane in the, in the box. She clearly just lucked out. And that's about it. That's as far as it goes for her. So her product is junk. So for her to say, I never left Halo, I'm thinking in my mind, well, you should have because everything you were selling was junk, right? And the really upsetting part is she used her viewers. You know, she played all of them and just got them to buy junk after junk after junk. It was complaint after complaint after complaint. I am not a regular watcher of her channel. Be I mean, I, on a daily basis, don't really use makeup because I, you know, a lot of times don't even have time. And I still he heard about the scandals, I still heard about how junk the products were. Those pills that were nothing but like biotin and vitamin vitamins. It's like you could not come up with anything more original than that. I don't understand. So that has always frustrated me. And so from a mental health perspective, yes, if she's going through a lot of stress, my recommendation, of course, would be see a counselor, get a psychologist uh, on, on, your on your calendar, which she's probably, you know, there's a good chance she's doing both already. Uh, but if she's not, that would be my recommendation to help her process through this stress. However, I question how far she can go without even being able to acknowledge just the very severe flaws that she has. Uh, and the very real role that she played into the position that she's currently in. So those are some of my qualms. And like a lot of my qualms with her aren't even directly related to mental health. They're just directly related to other aspects of her brand and the way she operates, her values. I've always felt like her values are have always been off. She's never come off to me as someone that uh, knows how to uh, prioritize and knows what is of true value, right? So hence at 40 years old, she's still on YouTube. I, I mean, with this kind of, with the kind of viewership that she had and the kind of money that she was making off of YouTube and probably is still making, she should be light years ahead. This is this should not even be the conversation. Light years ahead to the point where she's not even having to post on a daily basis. You know, most YouTubers, when they get so big, you know, they stabilize their posting habits a little bit more and they start posting two to three times a week, maybe, you know, and then they might increase it for a season and then stabilize it back down. That's the most that she should be doing at this point. Reason being, a lot of that time should be directed towards a biz, a concrete business that she's built. That's also, you know, time for her fans, right? Making sure the business is running smoothly and things like that. It should be directed towards, you know, this this concrete uh, foundation. Uh, that she's spent all this time building. But instead, here we are talking about this with no foundation. And I think a lot of it came from just her lack of wisdom and her lack of smarts, knowledge, right? And so when you're missing those two things, I think she's a clear case and example of just why it's so important to have all your ducks in a row, you know, because you could hit, you could hit it big and get lucky, but if you're not wise, if you're not smart, if you have no knowledge, you know, you didn't go to school and you didn't even try to study it on your own, you know, you're still going to end up being what you are, right? So let's go ahead and keep watching and see what else she has to say. But I think that's for the most part um, a good chunk of what, what this video is going to be about, right? What do you guys think? It's made very public. My business partner in Halo Beauty, Clark Swanson, back in October filed a lawsuit for $30 million. I just have to pause at that. Every time I say that number, I'm just shocked. So here's the thing. The first thing that I think of when she says that is, what did you do for your 
in order for your business partner to sue you for 30 mil, I mean, something happened, you know, something went very sideways, something went wrong. And from what I've been reading, uh, it sounds like she played her business partner. It sounds like there was some foul play um, or a lot of foul play on her end. And uh, I'm pretty sure that involved, of course, money and Tati not paying up money that she owes this guy um, and just trying to be funny about the whole the whole business deal. That's from what I've researched and what I've read, um, not necessarily researched, but just from what I've read and looked into, that is the bulk of it and uh, the bulk of why she's getting sued. So she's saying $30 million. I just cringe at hearing that. I cringe at hearing that she can't afford a $30 million lawsuit. I mean, YouTubers get paid a lot of money. And statistically speaking, especially those within the beauty community. Now that's kind of dwindling down maybe, perhaps, I don't know. But during the time that she was around, because it was also the time when YouTube first started and things like that, Buku change. She should be able to comfortably afford that should it come to that. So that tells me that, you know, her lack of wisdom and her lack of smarts and knowledge is just affecting everything for her. And it's always been that way because what have you been doing with your money this whole time? I mean, do you not have investments? Do you not have, I mean, and then let's just keep watching. Let's just keep watching and see, um, see where, where it goes. I will say from a mental health perspective, going through a lawsuit is extremely stressful. That's a lot of stress on the human mind and the human body. So again, I would recommend not just therapy, but also for her, if she's not already doing some type of meditation on a daily basis, that would probably be be helpful, just being particularly careful and watchful of her self-care, things of that nature, just because when you're going through a lawsuit, especially one of this magnitude, it is very, very, very stressful on your entire life, not just on one area of your life. So let's go ahead and see here. The company was thriving, doing great, even though we were in and still are in a pandemic. So this was just really mind blowing to have happen. And then it felt like more drama was just so she's not being honest with us. She's not being truthful with us because if the company was thriving and doing great, your business partner would not be suing you. You're not being honest. You're not being open. You're just saying a bunch of nonsense, right? So obviously the company wasn't thriving. The company wasn't doing great. Now, as far as the details to that, I only know what is, what's online and what I've read. However, if I don't know anything else, I know that much because you're being sued by your business partner. Your business partner would not sue you if everything was peachy and in uh, Halo Land or whatever she called her 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 uh, her, her pills or her vitamins. So that already is like, okay, why come on here and try to and try to be funny? You know, you're trying to be funny. You're not being honest. You're trying to blow smoke up my up. You're trying to blow smoke up my butt. I'm not, I'm not appreciating that, not appreciating that. So let's, let's go ahead and keep uh, watching, see what else is out here. Sometimes litigation is expensive. Let me just be raw and open. We sold our house in LA. I moved out of my condo. I have downsized my life in a major way to really be able to go all in and support what's happening with me through this litigation. My studio right here, this is it. This is it, studio tour right? That's about as good as it gets. I miss my studio in LA so much. So here's another issue with Tati. She's almost 40 and her priorities and values have always been non-existent. <laughs> non-existent. She's like, this is my studio. This is it. This is it. And I'm like, you have a nice background. You have a camera. What else did you go out and buy that you did not need? Because what I'm hearing is that you're going through this litigation, you couldn't afford it, you had to start selling all your stuff, 
all your nice stuff or stuff that you consider nice and everything in order to afford it. And if, if that's the case, then that means you were already living beyond your means. You were already living with more than what, way more than what you needed. And so that's a problem. That's a problem. You're not thinking, right? So obviously, if you, um, let me let me say how let me see how to say this. Obviously, if you're growing in wealth and popularity, you need to be prepared at all times, basically. And I'm shocked to hear what I'm hearing. Like, oh, I had to sell everything and downsize woe is me. Are you serious? Like you downsized because you were living in a way that was ridiculous to begin with. Like successful people and people that know what they're doing do not do that. Right. I, I don't understand it. And I'm like, you were from what I read her, her house, the house that she was living, she had it listed for four million, four million dollars. Like, why are you living in a $4 million house? You're not Bill Gates. Like, why are you living in a $4 million house? I don't care if you have $100 million that you've made from YouTube and everything that came with YouTube. Why are you living in a $4 million house? Unless you're Bill Gates, I'm not understanding that logic in the first place. So again, these decisions, where she's at right now, she put herself in it. And again, your business partner would not be suing you if something hadn't went wrong. So for her to sit here and try to paint herself in this light, she hasn't changed at all from the previous time. Um, she just is who she is. But I will say this. I, am, I think her video is a lot better than James Charles's video. I do think that her video is a lot better because at the very least you know, she's, she's acknowledging what is already out there uh, for us to see and read on the news. And so I do think this video is better than James, James Charles's video from that perspective. Uh, I know James Charles did acknowledge it as well, but his was, go, go ahead and watch my reaction on him to kind of see more about that. But uh, let's go ahead and see what else she has to say. Very, very disappointing. Everything I'm hearing, very, very disappointing. But I also have had a huge awakening this past year that material items had a huge awakening this past year that material items are not the most important thing. My integrity is more important and I'll leave it at that. Why don't we just go? So for someone who's 40 years old to just now be coming to that awakening, I'm like, where did you grow up? You know, what are your values? You know, I don't really understand it. So she did it to herself. And so I'm limited as to empathy points that I can give, basically. I mean, it is what it is. Go all in and just like, let me pepper in some more. Um, because this is just me being open about my life. And again, with all of these threats of like, I've been watching you and I'm going to expose you and I'm going to let the world know X, Y, Z. Sometimes you have to sit down and take your power back. We've been together for 11 years. We had a crack in our marriage with everything going on, if you can only imagine. I mean, the stuff that was being said about James, about myself, about our character, what we deserve, what we don't deserve, just that intensity behind the scenes felt even more intense and was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for me to see what I felt at the time was the end of my marriage. I did not think we were going to work it out. I thought there was no hope. I was living so um, that is hard, actually, because I do a lot of uh, marriage and family counseling. And so, you know, when something like this happens, I'm not surprised to hear that it almost ended the, the marriage. I really am not surprised to hear that. Uh, I'm glad that it sounds like they were able to, you know, patch things up and things are doing a little bit better now from what it sounds like. Um, I've always kind of felt like, their marriage was a little on the stranger side. I've always almost felt like, um, I mean, cause they do business together. So it makes the marriage 
more complex just off of that alone. And uh, I know that from what I've been reading, the husband manages a lot of the business side of things. And so, you know, this is on him too. I mean, it's like two dummies operating together. I don't know. I digress, but uh, it is stressful if, if you're going through a marriage to be also in, in, in the public eye in such a way. Um, so that is something that I will give her as far as like, uh, that must have been a, a lot, a lot to have to, to, to work through and, and, and go through for sure. So she was looking for sympathy points there uh, or empathy points there. And so I'll give her some on that end especially for sharing, which it's, it's always nice if you're able to share something that personal. I'm sure that it's already on the web, but you know, it is what it is. On my own, I took my wedding ring off, which we will get to that. I'm sure a lot of you are already like, oh my gosh, she's not, she's not wearing her wedding ring. Where is it? Oh my gosh, what's happening? It was a tough and lonely holiday season. I, for real, and I'm feeling his heart break and it's terrible for the both maybe like maybe she like went away for a year and got pregnant and is like gonna come back and chaos is happening and I just did not see a way out p.s not pregnant I know a lot of you guys were like oh my gosh what if she I'm not surprised she's not pregnant I mean I'm just you know her values <sighs> you know when your values are out of whack so will your priorities and you won't even know it. You'll think you're doing it right and you're not. So that that's where, you know, having the right people in your life comes into play. I'm not sure what people she has in her life, but it doesn't seem like it's been working out for her so far. Uh, but yeah, I'm not surprised that she's not pregnant. I mean, sad, but still. Comes back and she's like, baby, like maybe at all however i did learn so many beautiful lessons in what i call like my crushing season it me spiritual encounters and the power of prayer is a beautiful thing and i've appreciated all <laughs> funny how now she wants to rely on the power of prayer uh <laughs> it's just i mean was she praying before when she you know got lucky and hit the jackpot I, it makes me wonder that but it's always nice because it's never too late uh, to come to, to believe in something greater than yourself. And I do believe that. And so we go through tough times as human beings and naturally that does humble us. So what it sounds like is maybe this experience has maybe kind of helped in humbling her because she was not humble at all. And she's still not. If the, if this experience has helped in any way, it might have helped humble her a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not holding my breath as to, you know, it being a significant amount, but it sounds like what she's describing is she's been humbled <laughs> from her perspective. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's always good. All of your prayers and those of you that have reached out, you've let me know that you're praying for me. Um, it's meant so much. I was moving out of the Bellevue condo. I had put a bag of jewelry together to take and then another one to donate. I think we can see where this story is going. So I hadn't been wearing my ring. It was with some other jewelry. And I believe, unless by a miracle, I find it pop up, but I've looked everywhere, that it got donated. So if you have my wedding ring, well, she donated her wedding ring. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, girl, I, why didn't you sell it? I, I, I'm confused. She should have sold it um, because then at least she would make a profit off of the wedding ring because you could see it as a symbol. I mean, uh, you know, new beginning, new be beginnings after uh, going through a hard time within the marriage. So you could always attach a symbol to it. However, I'm not sure what the whole giving away thing is about. Um, I'm guessing she was really into her feelings and just having a hard time in the marriage. And like she said, thinking that she wouldn't be married anymore. So she gave away the ring. <laughs> well, I mean, I wonder if he's going to give her a new one. I, you know, what? whatever. I mean, I think that 
Um, it's funny that you gave away the ring. Uh, I would have done something similar, but I would have sold it. I mean, because after all, it is a wedding ring. You know, it's not just like any old ring. So, but I, and I wouldn't have done that until like after the, the divorce. <laughs> so she, she, you know, again, questioning her maturity level, you know, like taking, doing all these things at the age of 40 without fully processing through flabbergasting, you know, I'm like, just, you know, she, she there's just something seriously wrong there that she needs to go to counseling double time for whatever she's doing now. She needs to double it, whatever counseling or anything that if she's not doing any, she needs to double, triple it. If she's doing some, she needs to double, triple it. Right. Because again, decision-making, you know, it, it's a pattern here with her as far as her decision making and it's very concerning very good like why would you sell the ring before finalizing the divorce I'm not understanding <laughs> like were you just not into the marriage <laughs> to begin with were you just not that you were just not that into it I don't understand it but anyways that's just um what I'm getting from what she's saying so let's see if there's anything left I think we kind of made it through uh, most of it here. Asking about Tati Beauty, and I am going to be addressing that, the brand, all of it in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. I don't have much more as far as Tati Beauty needs to go. In my opinion, it just needs to go. That is such a crapshoot of a product. It's such a crapshoot of a business. And the reason is because she thought that she could play her following. You know, when people don't appreciate what they have because they just lack wisdom um, and knowledge, this is what happens. This is the path. She is the example of what not to do and the path not of, that you should not take. This is it right here, right? Uh, from Especially from what I've been reading, you know, the way she talks about her following. I don't know if she still does that, but... The way she talks about her following is not positive. You know, oh, I could just sell them anything and they'll buy it. Well, yeah, you could do that, but then you end up here, <laughs> you know, but you shouldn't have to end up here to know that, to value what you have, right? Um, and to know what to value. And that's always been her problem. And that's why she stays in the same place that she has always been. She does, she's not, she doesn't grow. She's not moving. She's one of those people that finds it hard to transition through the different stages in life. And that will keep you stuck in one stage. And that will create a lot of problems for you. Exhibit A, right? You have to be able to transition through those different phases in life. And everyone goes through it. Every human goes through it. You know, as we're growing up, to teenagers, to our 20s, to our 30s, to our 40s, you have to be able to transition through. You can't hold on to any one stage. Otherwise, this is what happens. It's catastrophic. And when I say transition through, that includes everything. Learning uh, what to values, your morals, everything. You have to be able to like move through and grow and grow. And she hasn't been able to do that, at least not successfully. Well, anyways, that's the end of uh, my video here. Uh, and uh, just kind of my uh, review on the video on uh, Tati's video and everything else. Uh, I will be posting a lot more. I post weekly five times a week at 6 p.m. in the evening. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And also go ahead and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It was really, really great talking to you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.